Good evening there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here tonight. Hey, folks, tonight I want to introduce to you our latest DVD uh, that we have for sale at the MintHillBillyStore.com. It's called How to Adjust Your Valves on Your Small Block Chevy. And uh, this here is actually the uh, vehicle that we use to uh, uh, make the DVD. Uh, this 355 Chevy engine here has a, has a solid lift camshaft. And uh, we take you through the DVD, we actually show you two different ways of adjusting valves on an engine with solid lift cam. And we also discuss how to adjust valves on, on an engine that had a hydraulic cam. So folks, if you're interested, go to the MidHillBillyStore.com, find the ad, and, and uh, you can purchase one of these today. So friends, thank you for watching this video tonight, and uh, we're going to add a couple snippets from the DVD that you can watch right now. And uh, we'll see you next time. So take care and have a great day. Now, uh, also you will need a set of feeler gauges. And you need to know what the specification is that you're going to adjust your solid lift cam to. Typically that information comes with the camshaft that you installed in the engine. Uh, on this particular engine today, we're going to adjust uh, the valve lash to 20 thousandths of an inch. So we got a 20 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge here. Now here's another set of feeler gauges. This is what they call a go-no gauge. The end of it is that on this particular feeler gauge right here is at 19 thousandths of an inch and then when it gets to right here it turns into 21 thousandths. So if you can stick that in there and you can't stick that in there you know you're pretty doggone close. Uh, so that, that's uh, very useful for someone who doesn't really is not really used to the correct feel of what it should feel like. Uh, use a go-no gauge. I'll be using this standard gauge today. I prefer these, a little bit easier for me to work with. Um, now let me talk about, uh, this right here is a stock rocker arm off of a small block Chevrolet. And basically all it is is here's your rocker arm and you have a little ball inside here to where it can pivot on the stud and you have a lock nut. Now typically this is a crimp nut. So when it screws onto the stud, you know, it'll stay wherever you put it. It doesn't require a lock washer or anything of that nature. Now when adjusting valves with this style of setup, you'll need a ratchet and a 5 8 socket because you'll be actually having to turn this nut in, you know, to tighten up the lash and sometimes you'll have to back it off to get it just right. It can be a little aggravating, but I just want to let you know that that would be how you would adjust if you had a... Uh, stock set of um, rocker arms on your small block Chevrolet. Now one more tool that uh, is not necessary but makes life a lot easier is a little uh, remote starter um, switch here. Basically all it is is a spring loaded switch. You hook it down to your starter on the big post and then you hook it to the uh, solenoid and you can from right out here in the engine bay you can just bump the button spin the engine over as needed. And, uh, we're going to break, we're just going to break it loose since we got the tools in our hand. And then we'll bump the engine around. Okay. So we'll bump it around. We're watching for the uh, intake valve to open and close. Starting to open, starting to close, one more bump, okay right there, she's ready to go. This technique I like a lot better, it's a little bit easier, not as much bumping of the engine around, and it works pretty good. Set to go. I'm going to tighten this baby down. Okay. Okay, so number four is done. And folks, you definitely always want to go back and just, you know, you double check after you tighten them down. Make sure your clearance still feels good, and that does. 
So now the next cylinder is number three. Back onto the other side of the engine. Here we go.